Hello indie game fans! There have been some movement on the action-adventure game front in recent months, and with the impending release of Eastward next week, I thought that we'll take a look at some of the best Zelda-style indie games, although one or two may stray from that formula, but are no less worth a play. Let's begin with Stories of Betham Full Moon, a title where you're on a journey to become a wizard and trying to break a curse cast on your father all those many years ago. As a fan of pixel art, I do love the look of this game, being simple but is able to fully convey its intended purposes. Of course, with the emphasis on magic and ranged attacks, the feel of this title is a little different as compared to a Zelda game, but it does stand on its own. Nothing too crazy, but a smaller title worth a play. One of the OG Zelda-style indie games is Anodyne, one that has a little bit of a surreal and creepy vibe due to the setting. This game actually takes place in the mind of our protagonist, with a number of weird and odd characters that populate the space. Simple but effective pixel art as well, a trend that you will see in games that I recommend since I do love this look, but despite the aesthetic, there are some darker themes covered by this game where it has an M rating by the ESRB, so do go into this game knowing that. It does also have a sequel that uses the PSX aesthetic in addition to the GBA look, where it's equally as weird and both are worth a play. If there's one thing that I love about the diversity of indie game developers is when they add a little bit of their own culture, mythology and stories into the games, case in point being Reverie, coming to us from a developer in New Zealand and is inspired by the legend of Maui and the giant fish. You play as a young boy adventuring on the island in order to calm down the restless spirits and to keep the residents safe. It is just 6 dungeons with a variety of real-life items as weapons and equipment such as a cricket bat and a yo-yo, all with, again, another simple but effective pixel art style. I know, I know, it's yet another pixel art title, but hey, classic Zelda games were all using that art style, but certainly do not rest on Lena's Inception, one that flips genre tropes on your head, with the ability to switch between 8 and 16-bit art styles as well. The legendary hero is dead, and you, his trainer, takes up arms, going after the eight archangels in order to restore a crumbling world. There's a little bit of procedural generation here, but it is not a roguelite, but the use of intentional game glitches adds to the experience. Since we last saw this, the developers have released version 1.1, which adds new areas, weapons and more, making it even better. To keep up to date with indie games, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not. Alright, time for some non-pixel art entries, beginning with a hidden gem from this year in Stonefly.
is another action-adventure game where the unique hook is that you're piloting a tiny robot mech, which of course is inspired by bugs. While not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison to Zelda, the various forms of the mech and the minute-to-minute -minute action is pretty good, with an interesting art style that's a pleasure to look at. You're on a quest to recover a stolen family heirloom, battling your way across the world in order to do so. It has some non-conventional ideas as well, making this worth a play, and if you love the picks so far, smack that like button to show your support. My go-to title when pointing people towards Zelda-like indie games has been Ocean Horn Monster of Uncharted Seas for quite a number of years. Since this is very Zelda-like, down to exploration, use of bombs, combat, and even the sailing portion of Wind Waker. You are on a quest to find your father, who disappeared in the middle of the night leaving only his old notebook and a mysterious necklace where all signs appear to be pointing towards the sea monster known as Ocean Horn. As such, while not the most original story setup, the central mystery does keep you going, adding a sense of wonder to the exploration due to the whole Uncharted Seas part of the game. It doesn't have anything mind-blowing in terms of mechanics, but do remember that this game is from 2015, and while there is a sequel that's on Apple Arcade and Switch, I do still have a soft spot for the original. A title that has more in common with Reseteer and Items Shop's tale as compared to Zelda is Moonlighter, but it's a pretty decent action-adventure title that's worth a play. Like all great stories, it began without a warning. At first, everyone was scared. Well, almost everyone. It has you playing as, well, a humble item shopkeeper that has aspirations of becoming a hero, running the shop and selling items by day, and moonlighting by venturing into the dungeons and fighting monsters at night. Go head first to make every adventure pay off. Defeated enemies drop a variety of crafting items that you can use to make weapons and such, used to advance further in the dungeon, where the proceeds from sales can be used to expand and upgrade your shop and the town. As such, the gameplay loop is very compelling, with decent action as well, and if you have not played this since launch, do check out the DLC titled Between Dimensions for more Moonlighter. I think that developer Ludosity has quite the extensive catalogue that's worth a play, and I'm looking forward to the Nickelodeon platform fighter that is being made by them, but before we get there, be sure to check out Little Deal 2 Plus. If you played their other titles like Slap City or Card City Knights, I'm sure that you'll find some familiar characters, where this is one of the best Zelda-style adventure games blending combat, puzzles and exploration. Little Deal 1 is totally worth a play as well, so dive in if it looks good to you. One of the most gorgeous games from last year is Raji and Ancient Epic, an action-adventure game based on Indian mythology, featuring some of the most gorgeous environments that I have ever seen. I am coming for you, little brother. They will not stop me. You play as a young girl chosen by the gods to face a demonic invasion, fighting a way through in order to rescue her younger brother and to face the demon lord. Like Reverie above, this developer is unapologetic about showcasing their culture in the game, which makes it have a very unique look and feel. 
While there are some complaints of combat being clunky, I thought that it was alright, mixed in nicely with some light puzzles and even platforming reminiscent of Prince of Persia. A great entry from this year is the adorable Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion, a game that's self-explanatory in the title, where you play as the mischievous character fighting against capitalist swine quite literally. After failing to pay your taxes, you're evicted from your home but are enlisted by the mayor to pay off your debt, having to gather a number of items for him and this is where our story begins. Evidently, quite the cheeky anti-government and capitalism rhetoric in this game, which is pretty well written, combined with decent action and nice pixel art and you have a winner. A title that has popped up a number of times in videos like this is Blossom Tales The Sleeping King, a game that is one of the most faithful titles paying tribute to Zelda. Set in the context of a story told by a grandfather to his grandchildren, take on the mantle of the Knight of the Rose, fighting a way through the kingdom in order to save it from a dark threat. Classic combat, puzzles, boss fights and exploration awaits in this fantastic adventure. A number of you may be miffed that Hyperlight Drifter comes in only at number 4 since it is one of the greatest action-adventure games out there and don't get me wrong, I'm on your side. However, while the pixel art is gorgeous and the almost Souls-like combat system fantastic, taking a step back, there are some aspects which have irked some people which are worth a mention. Other than the vague story beat that the drifter is searching for a cure for a supposed terminal illness, there isn't much more of a central narrative to set things up which can make the player feel a little lost. Additionally, there's no text in this game, with a map system that may be difficult to pass where you need to go next, but on the flip side, if you enjoy exploration and figuring stuff out for yourself, this is the game for you. Oh boy, I absolutely adore Minute, the one-bit black and white title that is ingenious in its concept and design. <laughs> You'll pick up a cursed sword that kills you every 60 seconds when most things in the world reset, but key items and certain exploration aspects are retained, so it becomes a clever puzzle in figuring out what you can do in the 60 seconds and trying to execute that to the best of your ability. Don't worry, the time pressure thing is not that bad since there are low to no stakes for death, but a wholly clever game due to this bit of design. I cannot believe that I left out Bastion in my previous video, so I do have to make up for it by paying my respects to one of the best indie games of all time in Supergiant's first game. Yes, it's a little bit more linear with more focus on upgrades and progression, but just how good is this game? 
the fantastic action, one of the most successful implementations of an in-game narrator, an emotionally charged story, fantastic soundtrack and gorgeous art makes this the complete package, so if, for whatever reason, you have not played this, highly recommended that you give it a go. Surprise, surprise, Death's Door gets top billing this time since it's just a wonderfully made one of these. Playing as a crow grim reaper, chasing after the soul of a target that was stolen from you, adventure in a variety of fantastic environments, exploring, fighting enemies, unlocking shortcuts and battling giant bosses in order to do so. Boss fights are the highlight here, with interesting visual designs, combat mechanics and variety, paced nicely with the exploration and puzzles. Perhaps there's some amount of recency bias here, but the addition of light souls-like combat does do wonders for the action, taking the number one spot. For more upcoming action-adventure titles, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.